If you have an opportunity to do something that is grand and beautiful, you should. That's part of what gets me out of bed in the morning. The other part is that what I get to work on on a day-to-day -day basis goes boom and is loud and is fun. I'm Mike Grace and I'm the CEO of Longshot. Longshot's building a hypersonic accelerator to revolutionize hypersonic technology development and space launch. Over the past couple of years, we've put more satellites into space than the entire combined history of humanity up to that point. The demand for putting stuff into space is going through the roof right now, and all of a sudden it makes sense, because rockets are fundamentally pretty expensive, to revisit it and say, is there a way of doing this cheaper? I really think that space is important. I think putting people into space is important. And I think for that to become a reality, the food, materials, housing, tools that those people need, we have to be able to send it to space way, way, way cheaper. And I, I'm skeptical that we're ever really gonna get there with rockets. That's what Longshot is all about. When I was, I think like nine or so, I had a little journal and I would like write my future inventions in it. And it was things like, I'm going to make a rocket ship that delivers garbage to the sun. So yeah, I've basically always known I wanted to do stuff in space. I think the thing that gets me most excited is visiting the fundamentals, finding the physical laws that underlie the problems and the solutions to those problems. At a high level, Longshot is a pneumatic powered projectile cannon. What that means is that there's no combustion anywhere. One of the challenges with sending stuff into orbit with just pneumatics, basically expanding pressurized gas, is that gas at a given temperature has a maximum speed. The key insight and the, the fundamental thing that makes Longshot work is that instead of pushing from behind, we can also push from the sides. So we basically, our projectile has a long tapered tail that hangs off the back and we squeeze the tail from the sides, same way you'd squeeze toothpaste out of a tube. One of the core ideas of this architecture is we have these many, many stages where the projectile is coming along and you squeeze it, and you squeeze it, and you squeeze it, and you squeeze it. By taking advantage of the geometry of that tail, we can push the projectile forward much faster than the gas is moving in from the sides. This lets us take a comparatively slow moving fluid, like compressed air, and turn it into a forward top speed of the projectile that's at orbital velocities. By making the system very, very long, even though it's got a high total energy investment, the peak energy at any point in the system is low. So that means that it might be physically really long, it might be very big, but it's made out of the same stuff that you would build a overpass out of. It's made out of mild steel and concrete. So the system that we're building that sits on the ground that does all this work, that results in an aerospace result, is really a piece of civil infrastructure. The space launch version of what we need to build is enormous, right? It's this really big thing. And people are really scared that like, that sounds super capital intensive, it's gonna take tens of millions of dollars. How do you de-risk this? How do you build a smaller version of it and find a customer for that? But what we found was hypersonic tests that a much smaller, more constrained version of what you need to go to space is itself actually a really compelling product if what you want to do is get really, really good at technology development for hypersonics. It effectively allows us to build a prototype for a space launch system that has a market. So there are a couple different fundamental engineering results that we need to get to show that. One is pushing a projectile over Mach 5. And two is showing that we can accelerate a projectile using that squeeze approach. Yeah, so Mach 5 is our current goal. The goal is to use our, the system that we've built um, with some modifications to accelerate a projectile up to Mach 5. And so far, our record is, I think, Mach 2.2. But for us, it's still kind of a subscale prototype for something that could drive projectiles upwards of Mach 30 which is when you're talking about actually chucking stuff directly into space. I'll give you the, the image I have of an orbital launch from Longshot. So we have a something like a 10 kilometer long concrete cylinder that's something like 10 feet in diameter. And uh, we load the projectile in at the breach, seal it up, and we fire. And in about one second, the projectile goes from one end of the barrel to the other. It exits going about 10 kilometers per second. The projectile banks up off of the atmosphere and rides screaming up into the upper stratosphere 
a little delivery to low earth orbit. And then we'll do it again. Then we'll do it again. If humanity wants to really get serious about sending people to space, we are going to have to send millions of tons of stuff to the moon, to Mars. We're gonna be feeding, housing, clothing, and giving tools to people who are trying to settle the solar system. And I, I, that just feels like a really cool future to me.